Hey, it's the podcast guy. Sunday night, talk time on podcast. It's the Sunday podcast. And there it is. Sunday United at the GM Vauxhall Conference have put down first division Coventry City, winners of the FA Cup themselves less than two years ago. And what a moment to enjoy for the fans of this Surrey side. They've had their moments before, but never won like this. But the whistle goes down. You like the Sun United. Sutton United, the National League, are through to the last 16 of the FA Cup. No longer English football's perennial non-league club. A 123-year crescendo reaches a new peak for Sutton United, who are promoted to the Football League for the first time. Hello and welcome to another episode of Sutton United Talk Time on Podcast. It may be the quickest one ever. Um, I'm your host Mike and it's in association with Lucky Star Gym as usual. Joining me on the panel today we have Claire, Julian and Josh and we will be dis- sort of discussing as best we can Wimbledon's biggest game of the season, the game that they weren't interested in at all until they beat us and then suddenly it's the biggest <laughs> game they've ever had. Um, and we're going to look forward to a trip to Newport. Um, engagement is important. Thank you for everyone's thoughts although they were very similar thoughts um join the discussion keep your messages in like subscribe and all the rest of the other stuff on social medias um on any of them at sutton podcast and if there's anyone who wants to leave a review of the podcast make it a nice one um anyway let's let's dive in let's 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 get on with everything um claire it was the end of april since we last so who's got the popo outside the house it's you (laughs) <laughs> well, they really are outside your house, Claire. <laughs> <laughs> if there's a knock at the door, we're in trouble. Claire, it was the end of April since we last saw you. Yes, um, sorry. It's sorry. all kicking off out here. Oh, no, um, great. Apparently, there's something going on outside of the station. But anyway, we digress. Beautiful. Um, Beautiful. Living Happy in the, you know, <laughs> cultural hub of Sutton. Um, yeah, no, not too bad. Um, uh, I'd like to say it's been a really quiet like summer and that I got like a really long rest and I didn't spend you know a lot of time down the club anyway um so it doesn't really feel like we've been away um but yes lots going on on and off the pitch so it's been uh been a busy summer busy time since I last saw you uh four months ago although you know in reality an hour ago um (laughs) but um yeah lots going on but it's nice to it's nice to be back and what a crowd to be back with Not that everyone's yeah. the 18. Everyone's the 18. Um, this is true. J- Julian, it was the end of March for you. How all are good. you? Yeah. yeah, all good. All good. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's been great. I haven't had my holidays yet, so I'm looking forward to that next month. Very um, good. Uh, probably might be good timing. Uh, <laughs> no, I expect, no, I, expect we, we, I do fully expect us to rep- um, improve. But uh, yeah, no, all, all good. Went well. Excellent. And Josh, how are you? I'm good, not too bad. Had a nice little holiday. Um, came back and yeah, we working, busy working, then came back to Sight United. Uh, played at Sight United, played an amazing game, didn't get the result, but you know, I'll play the left back. Um, <laughs> right. But yeah, it was a good, good result. You said you played an amazing game. I think I, I think I, uh, <laughs> look, you might look you at it did. that way. I'll look at it uh, another way. <laughs> you have one job to do, protect the left back at all costs. And you failed miserably. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, no, I'm feeling good though. Feeling good. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> right. So, um, bit of club news. Uh, the ladies team decided to announce all 12 of their new signings yesterday which gave me absolutely zero chance to work out who the hell was who. And I had no chance whatsoever with it today. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's a good game today. It was uh, quite physical, to be fair. Um, it's Sutton Millwall. We, we we weren't doing much. And then I moved to my spot and um, we, we, we took the lead. Nine, about 90 seconds after I moved to my spot because um, it was very important. And then they, they they conceded again. Then we we went back to two one. It was two one right up until about two three minutes from the end. Yeah, yeah. It was a shame. It was a real shame not to uh, 
not to take that one, but to be honest, uh, it what you're right, it was an absolutely really, really physical game. Um, both sides kind of uh, really going in for it. So it was it was nice to watch something quite um quite feisty, I guess, yeah, after yeah. Um, a disappointing couple of games this weekend. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Um, nice. Yeah, and before that, we did uh, sit in the bar quite happily. Yeah, that's it. We'll have, have our teas and bacon butties and watch England not... We're, we're going to win the World Cup. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> so that didn't go to plan at all. Um, but, yeah, 2-2 two, two for the ladies team, who were off to a, a better start than last year, so that's even better. Um, bit of loan watch... Um, Saw Jack, he's on loan at Burgess Hill Town, asked him how he played and they said he was really good and he had a great shout of being man of the match, very composed on the ball and a big threat running forward. So that, that's actually really good news for one of our academy players um, and had a great day yesterday as a chaperone for, for the superstar that is Jenny Jenny. Um, it was an awesome, awesome day bullying teenagers to take their photos with Jenny who didn't want it, but they got their photos taken anyway. <laughs> On their own phones, which is even funnier. They didn't have their phones taken on mine. It was on their own phones. They were bullied. <laughs> um, but we'll get to the game. Um, any thoughts ahead of kickoff? I know, Josh, you haven't seen many of the, the games recently, but guys, did you expect changes from um, Tuesday night or did you expect an unchanged 11? I, I expected an unchanged eleven. I predicted my I, I predicted the team perfectly. I didn't have to change it at all, even though I did the meal. Um, um, so yeah, I got I got I got the team selection correct, which I was pleased with. Um, so yeah, I, we've been playing okay. Um, and then you know, obviously losing to Gillingham, but when we saw that the um, our goal that was disallowed was probably onside. Um, you know, I thought, well, you know, we're going to stay. We'll stick with the same team. We played, we played well enough there. We were just a bit unlucky, did not quite get any uh, result we wanted. Yeah, Blair, what was your thoughts? No, I probably thought uh, quite similar to to Julian, to be honest. That uh, there wasn't really much that we were going to mix up there, other than the people that we would want to bring in that we can't bring in at the moment, shall we say? Um, I didn't expect there to be a vast number of changes. Um, I don't play the whole predict the team. Malarkey, uh, but um, and I know I know you got the team right as well, Mike. So it's not just Jr. I was going to um, ease into that. <laughs> yeah, I, I just thought you'd uh, you're sitting there waiting to say I did too, I did too. Um, but I think that's probably about spot on. Yeah, um, and Josh, what was your kind of thoughts? Um, I know some of the names to you are just names on the team sheet you haven't seen them yet. But um... yeah, when I saw a six foot six defender, I kind of stood back, stepped back a little bit. I'm like, oh my god. Um, yeah, no, I think the the team looked, you know, looked similar to what I've seen on previous games. And I was like, okay, I was getting a bit excited for for kickoff and thought it would be obviously a feisty game. And um, yeah, I was looking, I was, I was looking forward to the game until it started, <laughs> basically. <laughs> 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 I mean, they did have chances. I mean, we I was warned that they, they are a different side to, to we faced last year. Um, I mean, I, I'm sure I read somewhere, I'm sure someone will correct me, but I read somewhere that Johnny Jackson did take the game that we played, we beat them up at our place, and he was like, right, that's what we need to build, that's what we need to... to I mean, I think it may be the first time Sutton's been used as an inspiration, yeah. but um, <laughs> I think he kind of aim to build a side as physical as something who can compete with us. Um, and you, you can't say he got it wrong um, because they kind of out Sutton Sutton um, for large periods of it, Claire. Yeah, I mean, bigger and meaner, really, wasn't it? Um, and it's funny because I think probably everything people say of us, oh, you're this like physical team um, and the kind of things that we get uh, criticised for, shall we say, were the things that were clearly evident there and you're absolutely right they they out Sutton Sutton which is um slightly amusing uh in itself um some of them were absolute units just uh stood uh um when the team turned up and they walked out and I just thought sort of, I thought our guys were big like <laughs> where have this lot come from so yeah I did think up until kind of before then I thought oh, this might we might be okay I wasn't hopeful for a win I thought we we're gonna at least nick a draw out of this um but I thought it would be a bit of a competition and it didn't really feel like it did it no I mean we never got going no it didn't help Julian with with Omar um we now we now know was sick but it didn't help with him having to go off in the first half 
Um, I mean, if it's not a red card, it's an injury, as Taz said. Um, but mm. what were you kind of feeling during the first half? I mean, they had chances, but they weren't really taking them. Yeah, I mean, well, it was it was no one of when he went off, wasn't it? So um, I think so that made a massive difference because he would have picked, possibly picked up the guy that had the free header to put it in. Um, but it was, you know, it's just funny. I've I've seen a few comments about a very ordinary Wimbledon and stuff like that. I actually completely opposite. I think they're the best side we've played so far. They've created the most chances out of any of the sides that we've played. And if it, if it wasn't for poor finishing, they would have won by six. Um, I mean, how they hit the um, the bar twice, I have no idea. And they should have scored in the first half. Um, they missed a sitter there. Um, they, they actually should have won by a bit more. So I actually think they are the best side that we played. They, they created 14 chances, I think, which is a lot more than Gillingham. I mean, Gillingham created nothing. Um, yeah. You know, apart from the goal, that was their only shot in the whole game. Well, on target yeah. in the whole game. I think um, it's a story of all yeah. four of their games, and uh, they, they've won all four of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I know. I know. Well, yesterday was an own goal. Um, you know, they didn't even score themselves. But, yeah. but you know, they're, they're, Wimbledon have got a player like Tilly, who was absolutely superb for the whole game. I thought he was absolutely, absolutely brilliant in number seven. Yeah. yeah. He scored twice uh, during the week, I think, or whatever. Um, he, he's a good player. Of course, he scored the third yesterday. No, they've got they got a decent side. They're better than um, than they were last year, obviously. Um, but so are we. We just got to get all the players fit. Exactly. We just got to get get going. I mean, Josh, because they didn't take their chances. Um, I was kind of sitting there going, right. You know what? We we're in this. I mean, they they did batter us a bit, but they, we they. I thought we were in this, and then Josh. Uh, so half time came and went with nil nil, but then um, Josh hit the bar. Um, or the post. Sorry. Um, so we could have actually snuck a lead. Um, but what were your kind of think, thoughts at that point? Was that a chance we're definitely going to ruin? I know we did, but did you think it at the time? Uh, I, I don't know. I was just, just looking at that first half and thinking, if we don't liven up, I mean, even if we did take that chance or take any future chances, you'd always think Wimbledon would get back into it because they felt up for it more. Uh, and I don't know... I mean, because we're at home and we should be, you know, controlling that ball, being physical, winning the duels, headers, 50-50s. We weren't winning any of them, I don't, don't think. Misplaced passes. It was just, I don't know, it just felt really weird game. It was like, come on, it's a derby. You know, get up for it and take the chances. But, yeah, it just didn't happen. It just didn't happen. Mm-hmm. And I don't think even if we took that chance, yeah, we would have gone on to win it. It just, I don't know if we had that fight to keep on going with the momentum. I don't know. Well, I'm going to throw my hands up because I, I had a thought. I didn't actually vocalise it, but I did have a thought just before they hit the bar twice. It's like, you know what? They've not actually had that many great chances, and we we <laughs> we could we could still win this. You know, we could nick <laughs> this, and then they hit the bar twice. And um, one of them, I swore hit them. I, I saw the net move, so I don't know what actually yeah. happened. Was that the double bounce? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, how that wasn't in, I know that we're quite far away, obviously, and um, my eyesight isn't the best, but I, I <laughs> was baffled that that wasn't a goal. Absolutely baffled. And, I, and there's, a, there's a turning point at that moment, isn't there, where you kind of go, oh, that's a lucky escape. We need to pick up our ideas and get on with it. Or you kind of go, oh, that wasn't great. And then you just kind of limp on. And I just felt like at that moment, like like Josh said, like, we just went up for it. Like it was like you kind of think like oh come on you've had a really near miss there that could have gone uh really against us and it just the it just felt like the the passion was a little bit lacking and which is bizarre because that's not what we're like yeah i mean it is i mean we, the, the first two goals were set pieces um maybe as julian said if omar had stayed on it, it wouldn't have happened um but Lewis is not exactly an inexperienced defender, um, so um, and he's not exactly a, sh- a short fella either. So um, he should really have been picking up as well. Um, the third goal, I know you said it was a good goal and all the rest of it, but he was never attempting that. If they weren't two nil up, he, he wasn't going to take that shot. Um, what, 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 do you, what do you think, Julian? I mean, if that's nil nil, he's going he's to look for a pass, surely. Yeah, maybe I'd have a but we'll never know, will we? I don't. <laughs> I don't know. Yes, maybe it was a bit spec- speculative, but it, it worked for them. It worked for him. So, um, unfortunately, um, 
I mean, it's, it's interesting, you know, when it was 1 0 on that say the keeper did a save from Goody. I mean, I, I think we all thought that was in, you know, mm. and it was a great save because um, he headed it really powerfully. But, you know, what would have happened? It, it's all ifs and buts, isn't it? You know, we just don't know if it would equalise then. Could have been a different game. That's why, that's why I thought it was amazing. It's all ifs and buts. Um, but, yeah, I think <laughs> I actually caught that, that save uh, on a video clip, actually, but I'm not going to show that because obviously it makes them look good. Uh, but, <laughs> but I mean, yeah, three now. I mean, lots and lots of comments. I've, I've got questions and all sorts sent in, but um, essentially, a lot of the comments are criticisms, as it always is. Whenever we lose, it's it's well, we're awful, and it's just it, we always swing from one to the other. Um, but it did seem um, that we've obviously played Notts County. We played very well. Played Barrow, we were unlucky, but we seemed to play well. Gillingham, again, there wasn't much in it. Um, but it did seem that this was definitely the worst we've seen of something mm. this season, definitely, and a, a, a spin-off from last season. Um, no plan B is is the thing thrown quite often. Um, mm. And how are we relying on Harry Smith after two and a bit games so much? Why is he <laughs> such a big miss? Um, Josh, it looks like you want to jump in. Oh, well, I mean, from watching the first time live this season and always seeing the long ball, every single time, I even said it to you in, in the second half, I want to know what the percentage of passes that have been in the air because it just felt like we couldn't have a, a few passes, click together and move up the pitch that way. It always had to be over the top, you know. It, 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 and then we were up for it physically and it just felt like every time we'd go up top or try and hit the long ball, it'd just come back the other end come back to us. So it was like, I wanted some nice pass. I wanted maybe Harry to come, you know, or someone to get into that centre role to kind of be in between the midfield and striker to kind of work that bit instead of just hoofing it up to the striker and hoping we get a, a head on or something like that. I mean, it's, it was just what I, I, I thought, really. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Julian, Lee, Lee is a target man. Um, what what are your thoughts there? There was a lot of conversation about that. Yeah, so I saw. Uh, yeah, I saw. I mean, it's difficult. Well, he, he's a, obviously he's, he's taller than Scott, so uh, um, that's the way they're going to play. Um, there are a few observations that we did. We didn't lump it forward all the time. Rob Milson tried running through the ball and lost the ball um, in a, in quite a difficult area. We wouldn't just close us down and. It, it was very difficult to, it was very packed midfield, so it, it made it really tough. Um, um, so the safe option is, is is to pump it up, isn't it? Um, and hope we win, win the flick-ons, but they were they defended resolutely. They were very good. I mean, I, I do think sometimes you do have to give the opposition some credit. You know, Gillingham were very good at, uh, with their defensive, but obviously they haven't conceded a goal yet, so we know that they're very strong defensively, and I thought Wimbledon were as well. Um, there's going to be times we're going to play side to season where their defence isn't going to be very, very good. I mean, Notts County, we were, uh, you know, first game of the season they were poor, um, and obviously they've improved since then. So we're going to find play, find sides when we will have space. But there was a there was a real problem with space uh, yesterday. So I think that I think that's a real issue. So I don't think we had much choice but to pump it up. I mean, that, I didn't see Amari get in the game really at all. You know, he, he tried to get the ball, but he wasn't getting the ball. Josh had the ball a bit, but he had to come inside a lot of the time to get it. Um, it, it was just very difficult. They did, as you said, they did they, they did a set on us. So, uh, um, yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, it, it very, and they worked very hard. And they were just better than us, unfortunately. It happens. We just hope that we beat them in the, um, the turn fixture. Yeah, absolutely. Claire, Claire what are your thoughts? No, I, I mean... It's an interesting one because I've had conversations about it today and, and what you said about, oh, how can we miss Smith after, you know, only two games of like kind of him being here essentially. But we, we do clearly miss him and you can kind of go, OK, well, is this kind of bad run of form, if you want to call it that, after a couple of games? Is that down mm -hmm. to, you know, poor discipline and the fact that, you know, someone got a red card for some like for a foolish, foolish thing to do? Let's be honest about it. And that's cost us the points ultimately along the road. I mean, it's it seems a bit dramatic to say that a couple of games in. But, yeah, it just for me, I just think, like, we weren't 
it didn't seem like anything settled properly yesterday. Like I, I thought it was quite up in the air and the, the people that you kind of expect, you know, there's always good points. Um, you can't, I, I can't ever fault Goody. I always think that he's, uh, you know, clearing things off the line when, you know, there's, uh, there's uh, someone else should be doing it, but he always just seems to be everywhere. Um, and uh, Rob Milson runs around like nobody's business, but it is just a bit like there's there's a spark missing. And is he that, is he going to be the spark for us this season? Is that what that is? Will we see something entirely different at Wickham when we go through to the uh, the next round of the Carabao Cup? Calling it now. <laughs> <laughs> right. There, there was a there was a high point. Um, I know a lot of people had left by that high point, and I'm not sure if it's going to make the highlights or not. But one of their players got it right in the nuts. It's, it's always funny when it happens to one of their players. Um, not not just Wimbledon, sorry, any team's players. Um, and he, he he did her. He did her. It, it hurt a lot of us on the sidelines as well. So, like, oh Jesus. Um, <laughs> Matt's interview again. Obviously, I, I love the man, but there was things that was mentioned about the conditions, and I'm like. Okay, we know the wind swirls around. We know how it it it, it goes like that down the green lane. Therefore, maybe we should adapt a bit better to it because it's our pitch and we should know the conditions. He obviously knows the areas that he says he wants to improve on. He's hinted that he wants to get a couple more in, which will make the squad even bigger. Um, and it's going to take a few more weeks. Um, Julian, what what do you what do you think of, of those three points or any mm. one of them? <laughs> The wind, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, it happens. I don't think we use the best use of the wind. At all, to be honest, uh, we had the, the second half. We had we had the wind, and we, we were shot shy. And there was a couple of times yesterday as well. Uh, we were shot shy when we should have um, someone should have exited and got a foot through it. Um, I think Lee had one actually. I know it was against the wind in the second half. But people were paddling and he really should have he should have known to shoot i mean i don't know if anybody's seen the sun shields goal against um scarborough yesterday uh central defender ran from his um third of the pitch into it just into about a halfway line and then just let rip and the ball sailed in over the keeper's heads into the back of the net and they won one nil um, i just felt that sometimes we we weren't alert enough and we should have do, should have used that um tactic occasion we need to do it occasionally keepers come out of their box going quite a long way we just need to be aware of that and the keeper was backpedaling um or that one occasion and we, we we had a chance to shoot and we didn't uh, all right it was from 35 yards but it, you know if the keeper's off his line then you just don't know i mean, it probably would have gone to the corner flag or something like that if it's windy I, I would i would like us to to um perhaps use the wind and have a shot because obviously if we've got the wind behind us and we're actually attacking their goal then you know it's going to go it's going to go in a lot quicker and it makes it difficult and we, we didn't really use it and uh, so that, that's why you know they when they had it in the second half they bombarded us at times mm. um well, but, yeah there is a, a well i think there's there's a, there's a point of taking a shot even if you think that it's never going to get anywhere like there was a chance for lee in the in the second half, and I was like, "Why don't you just hit it?" He was probably going to go over because of the way his body was shaped. But at least you would have got the ooh, and it would have raised the crowd a little bit. I'm not saying it would have made a big, big difference, but they, they had a, they had a couple yesterday. Obviously, the first one that hit the bar was deflected, mm -hmm. um, and then they had another one that was deflected. I think that just went wide, or or, or Rose made a save. I couldn't couldn't quite see. So um, they had a, they were they weren't afraid to to shoot but we yeah. seem to be at times whereas we weren't against Notts County uh, yeah. we played free flowing football and we're quite happy to have a hit but um, the last couple of games really we haven't we haven't done as much as I'd like to see you know I'd like to see do a bit more Go on Claire you nearly burst a minute ago <laughs> No I was just saying no, it's, it's, it's like what you said about their third goal had they not been two up that guy wouldn't have taken the punt on on going for it. He probably would have passed it. And sometimes you need that kind of like that confidence of going, okay, well, if I don't get it, we're, we're still ahead, so it doesn't matter. And actually, sometimes you've got to kind of go, okay, well, we're, we're two down or we're three down or whatever. I'm going to be selfish here and see if I can make something of it. Because I'm, they're saying that, you know, you're 35 yards out. So 
Like, I've watched Danny Bolt score from the halfway line more times than I care to remember. Like, you just, sometimes you've got to, you've got to take a punt. Be more bolty. That's what you need yeah. to do. Yeah. <laughs> Danny, Danny Bolt's goals get further and further back. <laughs> I've watched him score from the halfway line. I promise you that more than once. Um, Josh, do you have any final thoughts on, 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 on the match or any of those uh, points that Matt made about the conditions or wanting to improve areas? Yeah, more players? More, play- <laughs> more players? I raised my eyebrows for that. More players? Um, okay, well, let, let's see it. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> um, I do think we need another winger because I think, as as you mentioned, that Amari was a little bit kind of out of the game yesterday. He might just need that rest or someone to keep him on his toes a bit. Um, but look, okay, we've done it. We've done we've done very well on that match. Got, did you have another point, Claire? I was just say we haven't got enough furniture yeah. for more players. Yeah, no. <laughs> 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 um, we've got the little round poof thing. Um, <laughs> right, so. This segment, we are changing from the player of the day. I don't know if um, you guys realise, but the um, we're doing moment of the match, which can be anything. It can be off the pitch, which I'm sure it will be, um, or on the pitch. So I'm going to start with you, Josh, give you the first um, shout, because it's the first time you saw the team. So oh. what was your moment of the day yesterday? It can be literally anything you want that you're going to remember that came from. I think that's quite sad. The only thing I remember will be that double crossbar hit from Wimbledon. That's the only thing I can think of from that game. That I was like, oh my God, that's a bit of excitement, isn't it? <laughs> Not for us, but we'll, we'll, you know, I'm very excited in the match for us. There we go. Yeah. Okay. You're coming fourth. Anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> Julian, what was yours? Well, funny enough, Josh has taken uh, what that was. I was going to say. Oh, I couldn't I'm believe... Sure. I could not believe the the gasps around laughter around around us when when the all right the first one hit the bar but it's the second one it just, from where we were it just seemed like an open goal how did the guy miss and he just headed it I mean it was just it's just a tapping and he headed it against the bar so that, was, that so yeah I mean, we, we 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 just we were just laughing because then we gave away free kick and they scored from that so um that <laughs> so that was a great yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm tied third now. Tied third. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, all right, okay, fair enough. <laughs> Claire, don't you dare choose the double crossbar. <laughs> We've already discussed this, and my moment of the uh, of the of the match is uh, an off the pitch antic, and I'm going to give an absolute shout out to the hero that is Jenny in Jenny yesterday. Yeah. I don't think uh, I've ever seen anyone uh, enjoy being mascot more. Um, and um, I just delighted that afterwards she said to me, oh, my face really hurts because I couldn't, I, I couldn't stop myself from smiling <laughs> even though I'm inside a costume. So every photo that she had with one of those teenagers that you bullied into it, she was stood inside that costume beaming, and I think she fulfilled a, you know, a, a childhood aspiration there to be a mascot at a certain game. So she's my hero. Do you yeah. know what? It, it was brilliant. So I, I kind of realised she there was no one like chaperoning her. So I was like, oh, let me just step in. And I was kids looking. I was like, did you want a picture? And they were all really excited. And then there's some teenagers sort of looking like laughing. I was like, get over now, yeah, picture. <laughs> and the parents are <laughs> waiting for themselves. Um, I then sort of stole a few people's beers who wanted pictures with Jenny as well, some of the adults, because it was then at that point, like, right, everyone's having pictures with Jenny. Um, but yeah, she loved it. And I did say, I was going to pick, the, the bullying of teenagers. I love them all, obviously. I'm not really bullying them. Um, <laughs> but I'm going to pick the fact that we're about an hour in. You're not smiling in there, are you? And she's like, oh, God, yeah, I am. <laughs> so, she's just it, encouraging it was them. I was, yeah, making them be themselves. They really wanted to do this. They just didn't know they wanted to do this. <laughs> and I think I was like Instagram the shit out of that <laughs> as well. Um, <laughs> So I, I'm actually going to go with my unexpected 11 out of 11 because I had the opportunity to cheat. I was sitting with someone as they as the, as they were benefit. This is brilliant. So I gave an advance notice of, of the team sheet and I was like, oh, let me see that. And I was like, hang on a minute. I've got 11 out of 11. I didn't need to do it. The first time I had a chance to cheat, I didn't need to cheat. I absolutely 100% would have. Don't, don't. They were all about the, um, they think I'm some moralistic person. I would have cheated 100%. Um, right, points of views, I've kind of covered them all, plan B and the lumping it forward and so on. 
So um, we will um, finally get rid of that game and not discuss it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are going to look forward to the trip to Newport, and we are being joined by Ed from the 1912 Exiles, which I will. Yeah, grand, grand, grand thank you. Um, we've had a an interesting. Good evening, not so uh, Don't worry, you've been forgiven. It's yours. it's fine. We're we're very chilled out over over these this this side of the border. So um, yeah, no, I'm all right. How are you? Well, I mean, I was listening to to what you were all just saying there, and I, I think it both of our experiences are just um, testament to the fact that it's the point of the season where no one's quite yet worked out how good other teams are. No one's yet quite worked out how good they are. We started the season, Um, I think all of us pretty much saying, we'd bite your hand off for 22nd right now. You know, County have had (laughs) um, a difficult summer. We found out that there's kind of some financial problems behind the scenes. We lost a lot of very experienced players. Um, it always felt as though it was going to be a tough season, whatever happened. Um, so going into the season, yeah, we were saying, let's just let's just get through this one. It's it's a tough league this year. You know, there's some um some big teams have come from the conference. There's some some okay teams have come down from the, the third division, although some some bad ones as well. You know, let's just stay in the game. If we can get through this season and then we can kind of work out where we are. But um okay. yeah, although we got hammered opening day at Accrington. Um, and we also got done by crew uh, midweek. We've also managed to score loads of goals. We hammered Doncaster 4 0. We beat Charlton in uh, in the cup, which uh, I dare say you will have noticed. Um, and then we went and won, and won 3 0 at Forest Green on Saturday. So um, it's never dull. Uh, my the one thing I said going to the season is oh, we're not. Get, we, I tell you the the thing I'm confident of this year we're going to draw a lot of games. We're going to grind out draws. We haven't drawn a game yet, so I, I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> but we've we've shown that we're capable of scoring lots of goals. We've shown that we're capable still of conceding a load of soft goals. Beyond that, God knows. But um, I think the one thing we have probably decided now on the basis of the opening five games or so is you know. We we should be safe, I think, this year. We've got enough about us. Um, I'm not saying we're going to storm the league, but um, I think there will be two worse teams in Newport County this year. And that already makes me uh, very relieved at this point in August, to be able to say that. <laughs> at this point, the recording decided to kick me out. But uh, whilst it's going to be a bit of a mashup between now and the end, luckily for you guys, and luckily for me, we've got a real professional doing a great job filling. Thanks again, Ed. Cheers. Should we just carry on? I'll just carry on talking until until you interrupt me with a, <laughs> with a question again. Um, I mean, go, coming coming into the Sutton game on Saturday, um, yeah. So we've got a, a, a apparently this this is just news fresh in. Um, we announced because um, we didn't have a game down uh, midweek, um, but we've announced we're going to have a friendly on Tuesday night uh, at Merthyr. Um, which I can only assume is going to heavily feature members of the trialist family uh, as we seek to bolster our <laughs> squad uh, ahead of the end of the transfer window um, because it would be foolhardy and madness to subject our quite thin defence to another game where they might pick up some injuries. So I can only assume we're going to stick some kids and load of trialists out and try and see if we can identify another striker and maybe some cover at, uh, at centre-half. Um but you know who knows? We might have picked up another like four injuries by the time Saturday comes around with our luck. <laughs> right. Um, the um, the trialist family have more children than anyone in the world, don't they? Really? <laughs> yeah. It's they, sad that they only play in the summer, though. <laughs> well, apparently they're they're able to play uh, in South Wales beyond the uh, the season starting, and yeah, we're going to have a load of them turning out at Merthyr. But um, so I mean, going into to Saturday's game, provided we don't get any more injuries. Um, we are a little bit bare bones. We what we have probably lost this season is um, depth rather than breadth um, in in the squad. We've we lost a little bit of quality over the summer, but we recruited reasonably well. But we don't have the depth. So if we get injuries, that's when we're going to start to struggle. We've already we're already down a couple of centre halves. Um, we are quite light up front. We've got some good striking options, but. Um, yeah, any injuries are, are going to be the thing that immediately get us reaching for the, the tablets to try and calm our nerves. Right. Can you guys hear me? We can see you, but we can't hear you, Mike. 
Okay. <laughs> the other thing I will say, um, just again, listening to you talk, um, I noticed uh, I had a little shiver go down my spine when I heard the words Harry Smith mentioned, because um, although he maybe hasn't quite found his feet yet at Sutton, he and he wasn't prolific by any means at Leighton Orient, but he had a habit of really causing us a load of trouble. Um, well, you, can... you're safe because he's not yeah. playing on Saturday. <laughs> oh, yeah, OK, good. Fine. Well, that's a relief. Uh, Final suspension game okay. uh, Saturday. He, he went and got himself game. booked. He's, yeah. two games. So he's done all right for us so far. Thank God for that. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ed, tell us a little bit about yourself. I know we've had you on the show before, but tell us how long you've been supporting Newport and what kind of got you started. Uh, I've been going to watch Newport for just under 20 years. I moved to South Wales um, two th- uh, yeah, early 2000s, kind of um, started going along to watch Newport when they were in Conference South. Um, and uh, it's just been year upon year of success basically um they've they've never been relegated in the whole time that i've been going along they've won two promotions they've had plenty of wembley appearances cup runs all the rest of it you know at some point gravity will take over um i have no doubt but um they've just been on this up and up and i mean i was reflecting with someone the other day when i first started going when they were in conference south and i think probably around the same time sutton were as well we were getting crowds of 800 or so uh, at Spitty Park, which is a kind of council run athletic stadium with, you know, running track around the outside of it. Um, and now we're getting attendances of 4,000 odd in at Rodney Parade, which we share with the rugby team, but it's a proper ground walking distance from the city centre. And like the re the rejuvenation of Newport County and the rejuvenation that it has also brought in terms of some of the city and the kind of self-confidence it's brought back a little bit, I think, to the city, you know, seeing county play games against Spurs, you know, beating Leicester uh, in the cup, you know, all that sort of stuff, I think has, has genuinely helped to kind of restore Newport's civic pride a little bit. So it's, um, yeah, it's a good time to be a county fan, even though, like I say, th- we are in, I think, for a, a couple of years of um, uh, of, of quite uh, tricky times ahead. Um, it's, yeah, you know, they, we always seem to, to find our glass half full. If there's one player from your team's history that you could bring back and put into the modern current side, who would that player be at their prime? Uh, I mean, I think purely for goals, we'd have John Aldridge back. Um, you know, he, it, again, before my time as a player, but um, prolific at, at Newport, went to Oxford, went to Liverpool, and, you know, the, the rest you know. Um, but I think particularly this season, um, I mean, I say scoring goals will be will be difficult. On the evidence so far, we we're doing all right. But I think... That's probably the area where we'd like a little bit of uh, a little bit of nous. So yeah, if John Aldridge could come back, particularly prime John Aldridge could come back, I'd be very very happy with that. And this is a question for all of you: um, What needs to happen for Sutton to win this game? So if everything goes Sutton's way, what needs to happen for us to win the match? Oh, well, um, we need we need to be a bit sharper. Obviously, I, I haven't seen Newport's goals from yesterday, so I, I don't know how they play and how they set up or anything, but. Um, yeah, I'm sure they'll be up for it. I mean, you know, uh, losing the last couple of games, um, with a bit of a wounded animal. So I suspect we'll, I suspect we'll get up and fight and uh, give it, give everything. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes. We, 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 you know, three nil flattered Wimbledon yesterday. Um, they were the better side, but they flattered them. Um, and I, I think we just need to convert our chances. You know, hitting the post, if that goes in, and the keeper's a great save from Goodliffe, you know. It, so we've got to convert our chances. And we haven't scored in two games, which is a bit worrying. Um, last two games, so we, we, we need to score. If we score, we haven't kept a clean sheet either. So <laughs> we just got to hope that Omar's fit as well. I think Sharper is uh, hitting the nail on the head a bit there. Um, a bit more uh, communication. It felt like yesterday there was a few things that were quite scrappy um, where people went in for the same thing and we weren't quite gelling. Um, and I'm sure that's something that Matt would address during the course of the week to make sure that um, we're, you know, working on some of our, our set pieces and people know kind of a little bit better uh, what's going on. Um, no injuries would be would be nice. Might bring a little bit something <laughs> back in. Um, less less up in the air uh again would probably be be good um but i think we just i think we're lacking in confidence 
Um, I don't think yesterday will have helped that. Um, so, you know, maybe a, a good week in the training ground might find us in a different space. But um, I think it's going to be a difficult, uh, a difficult game. Uh, clearly, uh, Newport are up for it. They always are. No, it's always a, it's always a good game uh, between us. So it'll be interesting to see uh, what happens in that space. But I think it could be a. Uh, I think it could be a an interesting one to watch. I don't I don't think we're going to, you know, see one goal and that's it from someone and it just be a bit of a ball fest. I do think it's going to be a little bit of a little bit of a goal fest I'm predicting. It's just going back to that communication. I think yeah, it's definitely on corners or set pieces, defending, picking up runners, making sure everyone knows what to do, what their job is, making sure we, you know, we cover the, the danger basically and just physicality. Just make our presence known early on in the game to make sure we are up for it and and to, to you know not go out to injure players of course not but to go out and just show who we are and just get on that ball get it down on the floor try and do some like you know, nice passing and you know get crosses into lee or whoever will be up top and and try and get just get some goals because we're needing them a lot now <laughs> I, I can tell you this much the critical question will be how much do you try and kind of play out from the back. And if, if that is a thing you try to do, how yeah. confident are your centre-halves on the ball? Because basically, all the goals against Doncaster and against Charlton and against Forest Green pretty much came from us high-pressing centre-backs who were trying to pass the ball around and then um, mm-hmm. basically, yeah, uh, couldn't cope with that, gave, gave away possession and we profited from it. Like yeah. we don't, we don't keep possession. We we let the other team have possession. We press them, and then as soon as we get it, we try and do stuff with it. Right, and Ed, if you can't cope with the high press, you're in trouble. Ed, we're exactly the same. Our manager doesn't believe in passing it about playing <laughs> candy football. We can see three or four goals a season by doing that. They're not good 100%. enough. So we don't do that, and we and we don't uh, have we don't like having the ball either. So I'm not sure where the ball's going to be. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah we, 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 win, we win games generally when we have less possession um, we do better if we have more possession we tend to somehow lose the game um, so yeah it's, it, it's going to be interesting yeah a good meeting of styles yeah <laughs> I, I was going to say in the absence of us signing back Dave Adjaboy before the weekend Ed, um, because I, I, know, I know you love him I do I mean there, there's a there's a player I'd love to see in a Newport shirt but uh, that's not going to happen anytime soon but yeah he was always a pleasure to watch for you lot yeah right yeah. so we'll, we'll we'll wrap up um and like because I've got to try and build this together somehow um so the last question is going to be, um, you have somehow been selected from the crowd to go in and give a 30-second message to the team before they go out for the match um, and a prediction of the score. So, Claire, you said it's going to be a goal fest, so we will start with you. What's your little pre-match chat and goal uh, score prediction? I mean, I think I keep it simple and uh, basically say, keep it on the floor. Don't fuck it up. Um, and then I'd leave. But, you know, my past tells me I'm not allowed to go in the tunnel or the changing room. So I, mean, I can't go in there. Um, but uh, my prediction, I'm going for 3-2 Sutton. 3-2 three, Sutton. Two, okay. It's going to be like 2 all until maybe the 85th minute. And then there's an absolute screamer that brings it home. There we go. Okay. Uh, Realms of fantasy. <laughs> Julian, what do you reckon? Well, I, I, would go in and, I would go into the changing room and um, I'll just tell them, look, We've got to be better than the last two games. We're not, I'm not, we're not going to lose three games on the trot. So get out there and play like you know you can play. Um, I'm with Claire. Um, we've seen, when we've been down to Newport, we've seen a few goals. Newport will score, I'm pretty sure of that. Um, they, they like to score a few goals, especially at home. They're a good side. Um, I think I'm going to go for 2-2. 2-2? Two, two. Okay. Joshi? Um, yeah, I think I'll just keep it simple. Get the intensity up. Please pass around and and just try try and create you know create the chances and hopefully one of them will go in. Um, oh, don't know what happened there to my, my camera. Um, sorry about that. But um, yeah, I mean, I think it's gonna be free free. I think mm-hmm. I think yeah, it's gonna be an absolute <laughs> goal fest. Free free. If everyone's going for goals, I'll go for goals. Free free. And um, yeah, hopefully that comes yeah. true. It'll be a good game to watch. <laughs> 
Okay, Ed, what would you say to your team? And oh, uh, I'll just tell them to give it to Will Evans. So Will Evans, uh, we signed, plucked him from the Welsh League, not this summer, but the summer before. Um, and he's a kind of proper utility player. He can be left back, left wing, centre mid, up front. He'd probably drive, drive the team's bus if you asked him to. He's one one of those. <laughs> Last season, he mostly played as a striker who didn't score any goals. This season, he scored five goals so far already. So he's already beaten last season's tally. He's top scorer in, in the fourth division. Um, and he is just on one. So just give it to Will um, and then see what happens. But in terms of score, I mean, we've got to draw sooner or later. So I'm, I'm with Julian. I'm going to say 2-2. Two, two. OK. Um, I'm yeah. going to go 1-1. One, one. And um, it's just because there's been lots of goals. And I think it's going to both managers and go, right, keep it tight. <laughs> don't say you don't <laughs> let anything go. Um, I am really interested, though, and I wish mine was being recorded for this, is to work out how Claire tell, wants to tell the team to not only shoot from the halfway line, but also keep it on the ground, because that would be some <laughs> shot from the halfway line. <laughs> I mean, mix and match, mix and match. It, it, it can be done, I guess. But <laughs> If I could oh, show right. them videos of Bolty, I would. There we go. <laughs> he says there's one on YouTube. He, t- he told me there's one. Well, there we go. I'm going to... I'll WhatsApp that to Matt in a minute, shall I? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that wraps up another episode of Cycling Life's Talk Time podcast. Um, as always, we appreciate your ear attention. Just because things are getting mashed up doesn't mean I'm going to forget the best joke ever. Um, please remember to follow us, like, share, and comment on social media at Southern Podcasts. Um, subscribe um, on where you get your podcast. Subscribe on YouTube. Give us some likes over on YouTube. Um, and leave us a review while you're there as well. Until next time, as always, thank you to the sponsors, Lucky Star Gin. Big thank you to today's panel. We've got Claire, Julian, Josh and Ed. Thanks to you all for listening and we hope you've enjoyed it. We will be back on Sunday with Mark and Gabriel. I might be doing another episode for Wednesday, but we'll definitely be back on Sunday. Um, get the questions sent in for the panel um, ahead of time and we will make sure we get them asked. Take care and we will see you soon. Bye-bye. United! 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 United!